pterosaurs were an extremely successful group of warm-blooded reptiles related to the dinosaurs, which took to the air on a pair of wings made of skin. Over their Mesozoic reign of the skies, they diversified into a range of shapes and sizes only comparable to today's birds, or avian dinosaurs. There were long-tailed, fly-trapped-mouthed Ramphorhynchids, the itty-bitty frog-mouthed Anurignathids, the enormous albatross-like Pteranodontids, the giraffe-necked, stork-beaked Ashdarkids, and the sometimes terrestrial fruit or animal-munching sailboat-crested Tapajarids. The Tapajarids are easily the most flamboyantly decorated and are some of the least well understood. One amazing dig site in Sao Paulo, Brazil, not only preserves a wide variety of pterosaurs, but also all kinds of fish, insects, amphibians, lizards, crocs, some dinosaurs, and even plants preserved in breathtaking detail, as though they died only a few weeks or even days ago. A fossil of a fan-crested pterosaur, those tapajards I mentioned earlier, was taken from this dig site, which belongs to a layer of rock called the Crato Formation many years ago. Specifically, the fossil, which is an almost complete skeleton, was chunked into six slabs and taken from the area by fossil poachers. This is unfortunately painfully common in Brazil. Locals and foreigners alike pillage the natural history resources of the country for research, fortune, or both abroad. This happened a year or so ago with the little peacock-feathered dinosaur Ubirahara, many years ago with the four-legged snake, and possibly recently with the eagle shark. The pterosaur fossil was confiscated by local police during a raid at Santos Harbor in Sao Paulo. It was confiscated together with a bunch of other exceptionally well-preserved fossils, which we'll likely see descriptions of in due time. These priceless Brazilian fossils are now fully accessible for research to everyone and not taken to faraway European countries like the days of old. Brazil has stricter laws on fossils than the US as they label fossils a geological heritage of the country, so any collecting of fossils requires permission, with trade and private collection of these resources a crime. It's due to the illegal nature of the collection of the pterosaur specimen that the researchers aren't 100% sure where it came from or what procedures were used to collect and prepare it. Once the specimen was turned over to an official repository, it was given a proper item number and could be displayed and studied. The research team, led by Victor Bakari, found the pterosaur specimen to belong to an already known genus and species of one of the most flamboyant flying reptiles so far discovered, Tupandactylus navigans. Tupandactylus has been known since 1997 with two species to its name, Imperator and Navigans. Tupandactylus happens to have the largest head crest of any known tapajarids, with a projection of bone from the backside of the skull and the crest of the beak, which creates a large, less than sign. That shape would have had soft tissue between it, creating an enormous guitar pick shaped sail atop the critter's short beaked skull. This new specimen is not only the most complete known of Tupendactylus and the species Tupendactylus navigans, but is one of the most complete skeletons of a tapajarid pterosaur known from Brazil, and ranks up there with some of the most complete skeletons of all pterosaurs. The new specimen differs most strongly in the bend in its crest. Unlike the other known specimen of Tupendactylus navigans or Imperator, this guy's crest bends forward at the point where the beak meets the splint of bone that makes up the front border of the crest. So not only does this guy's crest look like Johnny Bravo's pompadour, but also the disgusting crest of flesh atop the Chad's head. This specimen is the first time researchers have been able to study more than just the skull of the species. In doing so, they found that the skeleton shows evidence, like its long neck and the ratio of its fore and hind limbs, that this pterosaur was a terrestrial forager. The huge crest may have been a drag when it came to long-distance flights, literally. However, these beasts were still adept at the art of flying. It retained the strong muscle-anchoring notches and plates, as well as a huge sternum, that most other pterosaurs need for flying. The new specimen helps to better understand this group of flying reptiles and round out another aspect to the varied fauna of the Crato Formation. 
The researchers have expressed interest in future studies on possible pigmentation preserved in the soft tissue crest, which they may be able to see with the help of UV light. Some scientists think the crests of these animals were so large they may have caused some problems, so further study on the connection between crest size, habitat, behavior, and flight capabilities in these pterosaurs is of particular interest. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. This video is partially brought to you by my lovely patrons. Pledge to that Patreon at any tier you like for many delicious offerings, like art, behind the scenes content, special discord roles, and some physical products that will be revealed in the near future. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, and Arda Bayer, as well as my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Admin.